What relevance does a 100 year old agreement by the international community of the time, vastly smaller and different than the international community of today, by a now defunct body that failed in its main mission to prevent World War II have today? Well, it turns out quite a lot. Over decades, doubts have plagued many Zionists in Israel and abroad as to the legitimacy of Jewish primacy in the land of Israel in general, and in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank in particular. An incessant campaign that has been waged on all fronts, in universities, the press, international organizations, and in the battlefield, have tried to defeat the Jewish quest for national identity and liberation in the land of Israel that was rekindled in the mid 1800s, 2000 years into a seemingly interminable exile. The 100th anniversary of the long forgotten San Remo resolution that was adopted on April 25th, 1920 at Villa du Vacha in Northern Italy by representatives of the allied powers in World War I, Great Britain, France, Italy, Japan, and the United States as an observer has provided an opportunity to re-examine the source of these doubts and reassess the fact that Jewish sovereignty over all the territory west of the Jordan River, as envisioned in the San Remo Resolution, is backed by binding international agreements in force to this day. The League of Nations was established at the Paris Peace Conference on June 28, 1919, by representatives of the victorious allies in World War I, and set the peace terms for the defeated central powers. The League's covenant, its binding document, took effect on January 10, 1920. It included, among other things, a mandate system under which territories of the defeated nations would be administered by different governments on behalf of the League. Territories of the Ottoman Empire were termed A mandates. Just three months later, at San Remo, the high contracting powers, the Security Council of the League of Nations, decided that the territory of modern day Israel and Jordan that had been held by the British since the final defeat of the Ottoman forces in October 1918 by the British Expeditionary Force, when Jerusalem had fallen almost a year earlier in December 1917, that it would form a mandatory unit instructing the future mandatory power that it would be responsible to establish on that territory a Jewish homeland in line with the promise of the British government to the World Zionist Organization from November 2nd, 1917, known as the Balfour Declaration. At the urging of Great Britain, and in an effort to make good on its wartime promises to the Arabs, the League of Nations decided on August 12, 1922, that Transjordan would be excluded from all the provisions dealing with Jewish settlement. The mandate for Palestine was finally assigned to Great Britain on September 29, 1922, on only 33% of the original territory of the Palestine mandate. In his decision, passed unanimously by the international community of the time of over 50 states, the League of Nations incorporated the Balfour Declaration and recognized the, quote, historical connection of the Jewish people with Palestine as the ground for reconstituting their national home in, in that country. Furthermore, Great Britain was instructed to, quote, facilitate Jewish immigration under suitable conditions and encourage close settlement by Jews on the land, including state lands and wastelands not required for public purposes. This was the ultimate realization of Theodore Herzl's belief that a Jewish state should be established with the consent of the great powers, viewing the Jewish question as an international political matter to be dealt with in the area of international politics. Herzl died prematurely in 1904, but this vision was doggedly pursued by the Zionist movement he founded and led during the crucial interwar years by Chaim Weizmann. Through Article 80 of the UN Charter signed in San Francisco on June 26, 1945, the UN adopted existing international instruments, including mandates established by the League of Nations. Legal experts conclude that the legitimacy of the countries that, that emerged through the mandate process Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, Jordan, and Israel is unquestioned. More importantly, all the states that arose from the mandates inherited the mandatory borders, 
in Israel's case, including Judea and Samaria. And when the state was declared by David Ben-Gurion on May 14, 1948, it included those territories. The UN Partition Plan of 1947 has become, in popular perception, the most iconic event in the long struggle of the Zionist movement for the recognition of Jewish self-determination in the land of Israel by the international community, perhaps only because it was the first such event that could be followed live by millions on radio and recorded for posterity. But in the end of the day, the partition plan was a non-binding proposal of the UN General Assembly that left the Jewish state with only 56% of the remaining territory and that was rejected by the local Arab population and by the Arab world that immediately launched a campaign to strangle the nation, nascent Jewish state. Although Professor Ephraim Karsh, director of the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies, has described San Remo as the most un understated event in the history of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the significance of the centenary was not lost on all world leaders. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, quote, San Remo recognized the fundamental truth the Jewish people are not foreign colonialists in the land of our forefathers. The land of Israel is our ancestral homeland. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pence, Mike, oh, sorry, sorry in that, uh, that paragraph over. Although Professor Ephraim Karsh, director of the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies, has described San Remo as the most understated event in the history of the Arab-Israeli conflict, the significance of the centenary was not lost on all world leaders. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said, quote, San Remo recognized a fundamental truth. The Jewish people are not foreign colonialists in the land of our forefathers. The land of Israel is our ancestral homeland. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said, quote, the historic agreement marked the world's embrace of the unbreakable connection of the Jewish people to the land of Israel. And former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair, long involved in Middle East peacemaking said, San Remo planted the seeds of a modern era for the Middle East with a secure and thriving Israel taking center stage in the world today. The US administration's recognition of a united Jerusalem under Israeli sovereignty, its conclusion that Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria are not war crimes, and its vision for the expansion of Israeli sovereignty there under President Trump's peace to posterity plan represents a proper understanding of the legal significance of the League of Nations mandate that the Israeli presence in Judea and Samaria is not an occupation, nor is sovereignty a concession by the UN but that it is, was settled 100 years ago in Israel's favor in San Remo. In the end of the day, the Jewish people needs to base its rights to the land of Israel on our historical, religious, and moral rights, and not on signed documents. Still, Herzl was right to buttress that with international support for his vision of, an, of a reestablished Jewish commonwealth in the land of Israel.